It's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I am glad you're with me again tonight. Tonight's that special night when we get a read from the Bible story. I love hearing stories from the Bible. So I'm going to read one. This is from part two, story three. Now remember, part two are stories about the Garden of Eden and the fall of man when man decides not to do what God asks him to. So let's begin to read. Now, and I do want to remind you, when it says man in the Bible, it's really talking about mankind. So both men and women. Okay? The first mistake. We're on story three. Those first few days that Adam and Eve spent in the Garden of Eden must have been such happy ones. They didn't have a care in the world, not a single one. They felt well, oh, strong and super healthy. They didn't even know what sickness meant. They never had a headache or toothache or tummy ache. Day after day, they woke from a sweet sleep fresh as daisies and ready for anything. Life was a glorious picnic. Their work was so pleasant and easy, it was just like play. For all God asked them to do in their lovely garden home was to dress it and keep it. There were no weeds or thorns or thistles to bother them. And they didn't have to spend long hours putting up buildings and making clothes. I don't even know what that sound is. The climate was so warm and delightful, they didn't need any. As for food, the finest fruits and nuts and vegetables full of life-giving vitamins were all around them. They could have all they want just for the picking. So they didn't have to do any cooking or any washing up. Such was man's first beautiful, peaceful, and happy home. And Adam and Eve might still be living there if they hadn't made that one sad mistake. That mistake, which seemed so small and not important, at the moment proved to be the turning point in their lives. Afterwards, nothing would ever be the same again. It happened this way. One day, Eve went for a walk in the garden by herself. She wanted to take another look of the two wonderful trees in the center of it with all their beautiful, brightly colored fruit. Why, she wondered, had God given them such peculiar names? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What was good? What was evil? And why mustn't she eat the fruit from that one? How could it possibly hurt her? Seems strange that God, after giving them so much, did not give them everything. Here's a picture of what she might have looked like. Why should he hold back one tree? But he had no thought of disobeying him. Not then. No doubt she told herself that he would explain all about it one day. There was probably some good reason. As she turned away, perhaps to look again at the lovely tree of life, she was startled to hear someone speaking to her. Who could it be? The only voices she had ever heard up to now had been the voice of God and of Adam. Now someone else was speaking. Amazed, she looked this way and that. She didn't see anybody. Then she noticed the voice was coming from a serpent. Serpent is another name for a snake. How very 
very remarkable. An animal that could talk? She waited to see if it would speak again. And it did. Its voice was so friendly and pleasing that any fear she had just disappeared. After all, it was rather nice to have someone to talk to, even though it was only a serpent. Who was this serpent and why was it able to talk? The Bible tells us the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That means to lie to the whole world. First, he was known as Lucifer, the light bearer. He was once a leader of the angels of heaven, but he rebelled against God. That means he turned away and was battling him. And so he was thrown out of heaven. Then it was that he came to earth to take revenge on God by trying to spoil his God's plan for man's perfect happiness. Of course, Eve did not know this, not then. If she had, surely she wouldn't have listened to him. All she knew was that there was this most unusual creature talking to her in a kindly, gracious voice. Now, I want to tell you, people, as well as Satan, can sound nice, but sounding nice and being nice can be two different things. And that's the case with this serpent. He's not really being nice. And so it's important for us when we're listening to voices of people to be careful and notice if they are really kind or if they're just pretending to be kind like this serpent is. And the serpent said, Yes, has God said, You shall eat of every tree in the garden? Uh, yeah, replied Eve innocently. That's right. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, in the middle, God has said, ye shall not eat it, and you shall not touch it, lest you will die. You shall not die, said the serpent in a joking sort of way, as though it could possibly never happen. Strange, Eve thought, this creature is actually contradicting God. That means saying the opposite from what God said. How dare he? It isn't right. She should have run from the scene and told Adam and God what had happened, but she didn't. She stayed. She listened. And that was her first mistake. And oh... There is so much sadness that has come from that. That is the price that we can pay for listening, hanging out with the evil. In this case, it was with Satan. Sometimes it might be like with your own thoughts of doing something that you know you're not supposed to or maybe with a friend who is not wanting to do the right thing we need to turn away at that time and get away from there because it's easy to be tempted to do something wrong and that always causes us problems so that's what we're going to end for the night I'm glad you were with me tonight, and if you like these stories, if you have any friends that might like these stories, please ask your mom or dad to share this with them so that they can watch them too on my channel. All right, I want to say I love you, 
I really, really do. And God loves you. And that's the most important thing. So keep dreaming. Keep a story in your heart. I love you. And I'll be reading again. Bye-bye.